Test. Test, test. Test, test. Test. Test, test. Test. Test, test. Test, test, test. Test.
Yeah, those are not so bad when you do it by doing it with the home office. Yeah, I'm going to take a break and go get a cold one. <laughs> get, a, get a cold one and, and do other things while you're, while you're listening. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've got to believe that the program is the way of writing. What? I just need to I, I have no idea. Yeah, right. It's not quite so. Yeah. Well, there's something they did with Roger that may require maneuvering of our office. I'm just I'm worried about the the I think what they can do is from themselves and pay the time the park goes away and I here. So just real I was pleased that the gym I hate to lose the exemption. You were me before you were the vice president. Hello. Yeah, okay, if we get the, uh, you know, asking me to consider that. Oh, I'll consider it. There she is, and she's got her notes. Thank you, kind of thing. Uh, I'm hoping you're using it in this one. She can play calm. I do think you have a lot of work on this guy. He is the most generally done. You're a sign saw. And you brought your bass. That's right. And Alan chimed in from the Beaumont Scapper. You can call in on the kind of job. You might exchange an email, and I realize you've gone all the way. So, you know, it's going to be very bad. I'm going to go on that. 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 That's my I'm sorry. Alan, thank you. I'm talking to you. No, I'm going to say that. Yes, and I application. Okay. And stick on to itself this. I 
every Thursday morning. Maybe ten. Yeah. You know where I bought my wife. My buddy shows up uh, this afternoon on his rig. We have to redo the wiring, create wiring harness to connect to the trailers. Same Thank you. 
Thank you. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for the United States. Fasa. <laughs> I move, I move that the board enter into open session and affirm that the board met earlier today for the purpose of discussing matters involving violations of the declaration regulations for which a member, his family members, tenants, guests, or other invitees are responsible in discussing and considering contracts. Second. Moved and seconded for the board to enter into open session and affirm that the board met earlier today for the purpose of discussing matters involving violations of the declaration and regulations for which a member, his family members, tenants, guests, or other invitees are responsible and discussing and considering contracts. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nene's aye. Aye. pass unanimously. Lee. I confirm that a quorum is present and proper notice was sent to all members of record. Thank you. Carl. I move to the board approve the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded for the board to approve the agenda. Any discussion? <clears throat> all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any nays? Passed unanimously. Rick. I move the board approve the consent agenda. Second. Um, does anyone wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? In that case, if no one does, uh, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Pass unanimously. Um, so now we move to member comments. Um, so first of all, I remind you of our conduct guidelines. Uh, our board meetings are governed by regulation uh, 1G that states in part, Proper decorum must be observed by all persons for any activity in or on the common areas or common facilities of the, com of the community. Member comments are important to the board and we provide a time for member comments on the agenda items as well as general comments. Anyone who engages in disruptive behavior or abusive speech in person or on Zoom will be asked to leave the meeting after fair warning. This includes outbursts, side conversations, talking under your breath, distractions from the business at hand, distracting others in the median meet, uh, meeting audience. Um, so time for member comments. Uh, are there people who would wish to speak uh, here in the audience? Okay, so um, I will just remind everyone that you need to observe proper decorum, keep your comments to three minutes, and no comments of a personal nature We'll start with those here, and then we'll move to Zoom. Go ahead, Wendy. Yeah. Lot infection number, please. Hi, I'm Wendy Waltney. I live in section 13, and it's lot number 247, which I can never remember. I have it written down. There are 145 houses, and it's on the Little Lake, Keaton's Lake. It's another name for it. We call it Little Lake. There's one beach and there's seven open lots. I'm here because of the health of our lake. It is not a healthy lake, and we know that. And I do want to thank you. Uh, short of two months, 11 years ago, I stood here having just bought our home in a little piece of paradise, finding out that the lake had a problem that I wasn't aware of. You, as a board, were wonderful in getting it implemented the WAG program. You did a great job and we thank you for it. It's worked well up until the last couple of years. The last year alone, we were out 61 days of not being able to use our lake. That's a long time. And it's one of the reasons you buy a lake home is to be able to use the lake. The lake itself is an entity all by itself. It talks to you, it tells you where it is. It lets you know precisely what's going on well before any testing is ever done. 
If testing could be done sooner, that would behoove us all. It would make us less liable. We have renters. We also have people who rent short term for VRBOs and Airbnbs. There are, as much as we like it to, the, the information that the lake is not healthy, they don't always have. So if we could implement a little bit quicker, in other words, more testing, if you need help, you want volunteers that live on the lake, believe me, there are many of us who would be more than happy to do the water samples for you. If there's anything else we can do, we would be more than happy to do it. So that our children, our grandchildren, our dogs and visitors aren't harmed and that we all stay safe and that board and LOWA is not liable. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your prompt attention before, and I know I'll see it again. Thank you, Wendy. Yes, Alan. Madam President, directors and general manager Roddenberg, I would like to urge you to strongly consider revisions to the testing procedures developed by the Lakes and ME committees, specifically the treatment threshold, lowering it from 100,000 parts per million to 20,000 parts per million. Over the past 12 years that I've lived here, we have seen the uh, blue-green algae situation become worse but the pr procedures that we have developed have remained the same. Golf Channel's Martin Hall has a saying, which y'all may have heard before, if you keep on doing what you're doing, you'll keep on getting what you're getting. Now is the time for us to take a hard look at the revisions uh, proposed that you will be considering in the future, and let's uh, consider changing what we're doing. Thank you very much. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Is there anyone else here in the audience? Okay. And do we have anyone on Zoom? No. All right. Then we will continue. Um, we have no executive session actions. Uh, do any committee liaisons have any reports? Okay. I, um, yes, I'm sorry, Bill. Sorry, Madam President. Can I just Absolutely. Report, um, this um, past week, I filled in as liaisons to the m and &E committee for leave who was not available to attend. And I'd just like to report that um, the m and &E committee and the Lakes Committee, who um, their chair was there present, uh, are working closely with, the, uh, with our environmental resource manager um, to come up with a new testing and treatment pro protocols for Keaton's Lake. Um, so they are working on it diligently, and there's quite a few people that are trying to come up with the best solution that we yeah. can have for the for Keaton's Lake. And I know I'm looking forward to uh, reading that proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And what else? All right. Um, Phil, maybe you can give us your general manager's report. Thank you, Madam President, directors and members. My report is uh, has an addendum on it, uh, but the first item is uh, the financials. This would have been the meeting that we uh, would have talked to you about the uh, April financials. I, I do have a preliminary version that I'll, I'll pass out, but uh, I, we really need to, to take this to the next meeting. Uh, I, I don't wanna hand out something and then, and then expect you to be able to ask questions about it, but I'll, I'll give you the summary sheet as it stands today. I forgot to turn the timer off. I'm sorry. I scared myself. The good news is you made it within the time constraint. Um, I would tell you that uh, looking at the April financials, there are no surprises from where we were. Uh, the income statement is in good shape. The balance sheet items, there's still a few things that need to be done to the fixed assets. Uh, the the, the um, the reserve accounts and uh, some final reconciliations before uh, Charlie believes it's ready to hand out. And he was out of the office some last week unexpectedly and, and slowed this down. 
So I'll, I'll pass out the sheet uh, here in a minute and you can have it, you can look at it. The, 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 uh, the biggest concerns would have been the restaurants and you covered that at the last meeting. So you, you heard the, the biggest things and the, there are a few small surprises, but no big surprises. For example, uh, security came in a little bit better. We had the, the issue of not beginning the all box in February, it, it began in May and that, and that definitely impacted uh, in a negative way, but it wasn't as, as bad as we thought it was going to be. Uh, environmental came in a little better. Um, golf came in a little lower than we thought it was going to be because we, we uh, resolved some, some issues with memberships, but uh, the daily, daily rounds were strong. So we can get into all this, but I, I, if, if it'd be all right, I'd, I'd ask that we just take this up at the, at the next meeting and go, in, go into- I'm a firm time. believer in doing it right. All right, so I'll, I'll hand you this at the end of my report. So that's financial. As far as lakes go, uh, we, we, have, um, uh, we have Jacob's uh, report. It's uh, 4.2B. 4, 4 He's got an extensive report. We had some updates on his report as well. And, and you, can, you can see what has already been mentioned by a couple of members that, and by uh, Bill that we're working on the Harmful, harmful algae blooms protocol. And uh, I believe that Jacob was well received at the M&E committee uh, with his approach and he's still uh, refining it. And uh, we're, we're trying to count all the costs. What would it cost us to do alternative measures? What would it cost us to do weekly testing and those kinds of things? So we're trying to pin those down and I would say uh, with, with great assurance that we're going to be uh, testing uh, sooner, more often, and probably treating sooner than we did uh, last year. And we'll, we'll see how that, um, if that helps, it help, if that helps resolve. And so this is agenda item for your June uh, 28th meeting. We'll, we'll have several related topics and that and this will be uh, one that, that, that will come to you in that time frame. So that's, uh, look forward to it at the next meeting as well. So uh, as I said, you've got his uh, lakes report and a couple of items that I've added to my addendum, which is sort of the latest version is fish stocking. I think it's pretty interesting to see that we're going to get two new species that we haven't had before. The threadfin shad is going to be added to the main lake and the F1 tiger bass, largemouth bass is going to get added to Keaton's. And those were recommendations of the 2022 AMT lakes and stormwater management study. So what we expect those to be stocked um, on June 26th. So looking forward to that, a little different than what we've done. Um, also, I have an update on the throwable life rings. Uh, we've, we've come up with a, with, a, with a solution of where we want to locate uh, the throwable life ring stations. And we're in the middle of ordering right now, making some final decisions about the cabinets. Uh, but ideally, those get ordered, uh, if not today, then tomorrow. And uh, Chief Harrell has been involved in that, along with Jacob, myself, and, um, and as well as Daniel Smith, who, uh, who's uh, the building's uh, foreman. He'll be the one actually sending the stations to the, to the docks or to the, to the marinas. So that's underway, and we hope to, uh, we, we plan to get these in place right away. And you, you get a little more of the description there with the size ring, 24 inch uh, Coast Guard approved ring, 100 foot of rope and either 10 or 20 pound fire extinguisher in each cabinet. And it'll have a light on the top with a photo cell, have an alarm and a strobe with the idea that if someone opens the cabinet, it'll, it'll uh, in addition to them having access to a ring or a fire extinguisher, they'll be sounding the alarm. And uh, the, the win-win here is it's easy for our security force to be able to check to see if, if these items are in place because it will be a new standard that we'll have to deliver. We'll have a new standard that we'll have to have to follow from now on every day of the year forever <laughs> until these until we do something different. So uh, I, I do think it is a win-win that we're able to provide these. And, and so ideally we get these into place in July. Uh, continue with my report. Uh, Going back uh, to the first page, the crossover culvert pipe replacement project is going along quite well. The fifth replacement has taken place. So really the last one is at 9.9 .9 maintenance area. 
And then we'll see if the if the budget came in such and if the expenses came in as such, we can get the last property that we're holding as a as a contingency. So uh, we should know by the end of the month if we're able to get to that final item. Um, Route three fence project. Uh, uh, Carolyn, our our AGM who happened to have his birthday today, uh, uh, and I met with some of the neighbors uh, from from Section thirteen, and uh, the 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 uh, neighbors were one hundred percent in support of this project. Now there were seven of them present, and the other seven weren't, but the, all seven volunteered to go talk to the other seven. It seems like we have um, a, a good good acceptance of this project. They understand that it would it would be a good barrier against trespassing. It would also be an enhancement to their property and it would enhance the value of their property. So it looks like we'll be able to move ahead and get them. Uh, we've, I've asked uh, our attorney to go ahead and, and prepare the uh, easement paperwork for the first seven, and then we'll try to work on the, on the other. So ideally in July, we're able to get all the, all the property owners to uh, participate. And usually there's one or two uh, that won't, but it, but, Based on the meeting and dividing up the task, it seems like the neighbors will help if it if it comes to that. So and that was good news there, that we will we should be able to get the easements and uh, uh, begin the bidding process on this project. Uh, playgrounds been a, a big emphasis, and uh, we we did have a recent win where we were able to get the clubhouse tot lot open, and uh, we were waiting on the border uh, to because we have to put a deeper amount of the engineered uh, mulch into place. And we were able to get the border, get it set and get it open. So now we have three, um, we have three playgrounds open. One at the one at Sweetbriar, we're still waiting on parts for the swing set. And so at this point, uh, the deliveries are mainly uh, related to Hollyfield Park, the, the replacement of the, of parts for the, for that play set, which is one of the older ones. It's about two years out uh, from replacement. So we'll know soon if we can get those replacement parts or if we have to accelerate the um, the project. This is an action item on your agenda. We can, we can talk more about it now or we can talk more about it later. But at this point, it's hand digging and replacement, uh, setting borders up and, and getting, getting the borders in place and uh, waiting for these replacement parts. Uh, the AED purchase. I know it's it, this is a this is a board initiative, and it's an, an item that the the uh, the pickleball club has been very interested in. Are we going to be able to deploy these soon? And we are deploying them. We deployed uh, the new one to the uh, Holcomb building, and Carolyn can show you one of the units. We we have received some of them. Uh, in the case of the uh, in the case of Hollyfield Park, we're still waiting to get. That, is that the one for Hollyfield? It's a different one. That this is for Clubhouse Pool, and uh, we need we still need to get the additional units. We need to get the case. Remember, the case is going to be a uh, climate control case. All those have been ordered. We're waiting on deliveries at this point, but uh, our our staff is able to put them into place as soon as as soon as we get them. So it could could uh, happen any any day now. Uh, we talked a little bit about the pools opening, and uh, we, we did pretty well with the cashless approach, and we continue to work through uh, issues. We, we had an issue with the, um, the, the, uh, the splash area at, at Sweetbriar Pool, but we think we've resolved that, so we continue to roll on. Uh, we have a new fitness uh, center specialist in place, uh, Shannon Frick, so we hope uh, you'll get a chance to meet her uh, sometime soon. And, and uh, she replaces um, Jeremy Jefferson, who moved out of the area. Just yesterday, we had a meeting with the sheriff's office. This has been a pretty good tradition where every year we meet with the sheriff and talk about vandalism. And we do it this time of year because it's usually when school lets out. And um, I believe uh, sheriff, uh, uh, sheriff has uh, coined a term, or maybe it was... Uh, Chief Walker that that coined a term that it's open season now for uh, car shopping and that is going uh, walking around looking for unlocked cars and so the sheriff and uh, and uh, Deputy uh, Jason Smith definitely recommends that everybody lock their car doors at night uh, to to try to prevent these kinds of things so we talked about vandalism patterns 
Uh, we had our president, vice president there. We had our uh, safety and security chair there, uh, neighborhood watch there and staff. We talked about hot spots. We talked about uh, how what, what our approach has been. And for the most part, the sheriff's very supportive of our efforts. He believes that we're uh, take, doing the right things. And um, I guess the biggest news from the sheriff's side is they're about ready to announce an anonymous report, uh, an anonymous tips line that'll be countywide. And, and um, we, we took their advice a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year, and went to anonymous tips. Uh, for example, did anybody see what happened at Hollyfield Park last night? There's been some damage to the courts. Did anybody catch that? Please let us know. Uh, Sheriff recommended we make that anonymous so the person doesn't have to get involved, but they could say, I saw this happen at this certain time. All right, so that, that was the vandalism meeting. And um, the last thing I wanted to mention was EMAINT. EMAINT is in place. It was, it was put in place in uh, May and it's being used and it grows, the, the asset base and the use of it grows as we go along. Uh, it is also a link on our website. We've replaced our, our um, homegrown uh, method of reporting with this, uh, with this way of, of information right into email. So give us a little more time to get uh, used to it and, and used to the use of it. Uh, it's right now, it's primarily for the foreman to stay um, organized and get, give us a, a few more weeks and we'll have more to report, but it is underway, it is in use. So I believe that covers the main items of the report and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Phil. Questions? Yes, Vasa. Phil, I have a question for you in regards to the new hours at the fitness center. How's that been going? I hear it's, it's a busy place for o'clock in the morning. Yes, uh, as it's going well. Uh, there was a little bit of a complaint about from some about closing down at 10, but I think it's been a good trade-off for the most part. And uh, we're, we're still looking to hear, get some more feedback from members if they have it. Uh, I'll look to Carol and do you know of any other feedback? Uh, we haven't, she hasn't heard. Okay. We've gotten positive feedback. And my second question is in regards to playgrounds. Um, it's unfortunate that we had to do the replacement this time of year when the kids are out of school, just out of school. Um, but how often do you see us doing this again? This is an unusual year because we used uh, third party to do the evaluation and found that we weren't following the, the uh, fall to, height to fall ratio and had, to, had the replacement materials. I don't see this happening year after year. I mean, the last time we had something this big was I believe in uh, the 2018 time period when we, we had to we had to close the Spotswood play set uh, because it got damaged during cleaning and we had to replace it. We had to go out and buy a replacement for it. So it's pretty unusual to have something this 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 level. And I'm glad we've been able to get three back in service. And it's something we work on every day. Uh, the grounds foreman, I, I know he comes when he comes to work. I can tell he's got that weight on his shoulders. And he's also got to take care of all the common area mowing and those kinds of tasks. It just go, goes on and on. Uh, fortunately, the department works together, and uh, the the, uh, the roads crew kicks in when they when they need to when they have critical time to get things done. I'm gonna pick Paul. Did you have anything? I'll, I'll... No, I'm gonna let people go. Okay. Start. Uh, I've got a few. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Phil, something that you didn't talk about, but it's popped up on social media and saw in a, uh, an email that came out from our community activities is around the whole issue with our soccer fields and apparently an issue with the Orange County Recreational Soccer League maybe not being in existence anymore. And of course, if they are, they need to get us their insurance certificates before play starts again. And I think maybe there was some... The, the, I think the wording could have been done a little bit better that might have pointed that out. But anyway, uh, we've got issues with maybe we don't have a rec soccer league. We've obviously got issues with parking tension with parties and the pool and the players and a bunch of other folks using the facility here. Um, 
just kind of want to make sure that somebody on the staff is tracking that and trying to get an idea yes. on what, if anything, we can or can't do uh, right. around that. Oh, uh, youth soccer here is very big. It's very important. Mm -hmm. A lot of participation by uh, by the community in that program. So we want to help them as much as we can. Uh, along with that, an, an issue I brought to you in the past is our as our uh, community amenities are getting uh, used to the nth degree, yep. and so we have a, we have a, a pavilion, we have pool, we have the fields, uh, we have this building all going on at the same time. And the key is, as as the old saying goes, is communication. And and we want we're reaching out to uh, ORA. Do we have a meeting set? Not yet, but we've reached out to them to coordinate. We've done this in the past where we've, we've come together and tried to understand what, how we can how we can work together and get this done. The insurance issue is definitely on the on the on the table because uh, there there are other groups that have to provide their insurance to us: the swim team, the ski club, et cetera. So this is normal operation for us to to require this. And the parking is a big is a big deal. And if the more we know about their events and what days they are, the sooner we know about them, the more we can try to protect those days or at least suggest alternative days. And so uh, the staff has taken it on to try to try to make everything work. Uh, try to make the pavilion, the use of this building, the fields, the pool, all work together. Okay, as long as somebody's got the, got we got the bubble it. on that, um, and, and I hope it, I hope it'll work out. I hope we can continue or I, or, sure. or, or a in some form, be able to keep it going forward. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned the playgrounds and the the repair projects that we've got going on there. Do we have a project timeline? Do we have an understanding of how much time it's going to take and when do we expect these things to come back online? Because I know we keep telling people this is open, these aren't, these aren't, these aren't, but yes. we aren't giving anybody a time frame of mm -hmm. here's when we expect these things to come back online. And, yeah. and again, you don't have to answer what it is, but I would like us to, to have that information and start to be promulgating that out so that people have an understanding of how we're working and you know, not to not to cut ourselves short, but to just kind of give folks maybe an idea mm -hmm. when we're going to get there with some of these okay. parks. Right. Um, it's also come up around the the issue with the pool hour reduction, and I understand the the whys and wherefores. Uh, I guess the question I have is, it would be interesting for me anyway to understand if we wanted that to be different, right? If we didn't want to go to reduced hours starting in the early part of August when most of our lifeguards who are high schoolers go back to school, what would it cost us in addition if we went to, to Wilder, Willer, what? Winkler, 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 went back to, to Winkler and said, all right, we would like to keep these open longer. A, can they get us people? And B, what would be the incremental cost? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last one I have is on the maintenance uh, software update. I'm very pleased to see that that's, that's going along and it's not turning into shelfware. Uh, I would like to understand a, 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 uh, an update on the project progress and, you know, percent complete and what are the remaining phases that we're going to be undertaking. And again, a lot of that is just for me to understand, you know, where, where is the, where's the legacy data and when is that going to get funneled in and that type of thing. So that's all I have. Good. And, and uh, yes, on the pools, you hit the nail right on the head. Uh, can we get lifeguards? And, and so if you can get one, then how much would it be? Right. And um, that's the key. And we're the, can, well, can you can you identify other lifeguards? The one mis one thing we would never want to do, and and we can talk about this more, is we never would want anyone to swim at their own risk, uh, because we've we've supplied lifeguards. That's our duty of care. We would want to continue that. We would never want to back off of that because in the short run, it would seem like we'd save money. But in the long run, our insurance would, would shoot up. And there could be uh, some sort of accident that would just take, take us uh, to another um, level of spending that we didn't count on. So uh, the key is finding qualified lifeguards to fill in. I think the only comment I would make to that, just so we don't have numbers sinking great, we're just going to expand the hours. We have a contract and that contract, we have a contract. Built in, was built into our budget. So you either find a way to adjust hours so that if you increase hours in August, you've taken them away from somewhere else, or we all acknowledge 
that that is something that is not in the budget mm -hmm. and we have to find the money somewhere. Well, and, and that's a good point. Uh, when we did renegotiate our contracts, they shot up significantly. And at the time we were trying to get what, what we could for, for what we could with the money. And uh, there, there was sort of we, such an increase. It was hard to imagine we could even, even cover those hours. So this isn't something we changed recently. This is something that was set in, in documents uh, two years ago and that we're carrying out. I, I would love if we could have these additional hours, but outdoor pools have become much more expensive than they were because of the lifeguards, the cost of the lifeguards. Thank you. Um, Bill, you wanted to say something? Yes. Um, Phil, I have a question about our comment about the marina gas stock and replacing the pump. Um, last last year, we had an issue with a part. Um, and it was difficult getting it, trying to get the gas pump open. I think it was for the 4th of July weekend. Um, and so we now we're going to replace the gas pump. Yes. Um, do we know how how long the gas pump is going to be down when we're going to replace it? And can we replace it in a at a time when um, there's not going to be a significant demand on it? I think you've hit the nail on the head. We, we When we take it down, we want it to, to be down temporarily. So right. I don't have, I, I can get it ready for you for the next meeting. We can talk a little more about the approach. Yep. But uh, I agree with you. We don't want to lose any business right. during the downtime. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Well, yeah. The uh, I was going to ask you about the gas pump too. The only other thing is not just losing a business it has to do with people really depend on that thing. Yes. And uh, you know, um, a number of us wound up going down to the Exxon station with, with small cans, you know, getting the the ethanol uh, free gasoline down there. And quite frankly, you don't want people wandering around with yeah any, any more than you have to with cans of gasoline because it's very easy to have a problem. Uh, Good point. We had another uh, issue with the culvert taking out the internet. We had one, I think it was last year, over at Spotswood Park, where they, when they were replacing the culvert, they managed to uh, take out the cable. And they, uh, and it happened again this week, last week yes, at the, on Birchside. On Birchside. And what's inexplicable on that one is the day before they excavated, and all the wiring was right there. So you could see exactly where it was, and all the cabling was there. And so I, you know, I, my dog walking, I noticed that. And I figured, well, that's great. They identified it. So we're not going to have a problem like we had at Spotswood. And bingo, they managed to cut the cable anyway. And it was out for a day. So I, I think we need to find a way to make sure whoever's doing covert work for us understands that, you know, uh, solving one problem by creating another one is unacceptable. And you know, right. they, there's got to be other way to do that. Um, there's oh, a yeah, lot of risk there's a lot of risk when you're working in a neighborhood like this and, yeah and well the thing is they tough. did it right they actually did great little hand digging and all the all the cables were right there you could see them mm -hmm. and then you know after they did all the prep work they managed to break them anyway so it's uh it's uh you know inexplicable the uh the dredging on uh, at culp's cove uh I was talking to some people who lived down there. He said they were just absolutely amazed at what got dredged out. So uh, the uh, the people who who live in that immediate area are, are pretty happy with the result. But they did say they were astonished to see how much was there, and that sort of suggests that the the, the you know the infamous Culp's Cove project and handling the the watershed there uh, is something that we're going to have to address, even though we know that. It's easy to say to address it. It's a lot harder to do that one yes. because it's a Stream easy restoration. chain of easements that wanders mm -hmm. up the hillside. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, you know, uh, the feedback is: thank you very much for doing it. And my gosh, we can't believe what was actually down there. Well, I'll pass that along. I know it's uh, uh, staff always loves to get the feedback. Yeah. that members but appreciate the, it. The neighbors really appreciate mm -hmm. the, the amount of stuff that was pulled out of there. Well, thank you for your report, Phil. You're welcome. We're going to move on to committee reports. And the first one, uh, Jim Poole, who is the chair of the Elections Committee. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Jim Poole. I chair the Elections Committee. 
and I reside in section one, lot three, lot 313. I've brought with me today my vice chair, Dr. Richard Trost, and his job is to limit my remarks to three minutes. <laughs> I have seven points I wanna make. They'll be brief, I will be brief. First of all, we are fully staffed on the elections committee with seven members. All members have signed the confidentiality and non-disclosure agreement and they are in the hands of LOWA. The terms of appointment uh, expiration for our membership, two of us expire, so to speak, in 2023. That's Dr. Trost and myself. Four members expire in 2024 and one member in 2025. Our monthly meetings commence in the year during the April-May timeframe, and we conclude in September-October, and our minutes are posted to the LOA website in a timely manner monthly. Our prime responsibility over the last month or two has been to develop the TV18 interview questions for our candidates. And I want to thank our board liaison, Leaf, who saved us a lot of trouble by telling us what worked and what did not work in the past. So we have those TV interview questions. They were given to Carolyn yesterday. I have copies if any of the board members wish to have them today. And by the way, these are due to you tomorrow. So we've, yeah, we've got a green light there. Thank you. Uh, most importantly, uh, thank you to Dr. Trost. He has convinced our former president of the association, Pete Brown, to serve as to conduct the interviews for the TV 18 interviews when, when, whenever they are determined to be held. Last point I want to make is that uh, once voting commences for board of directors positions, we will count the ballots as we did last year, and we will fulfill the responsibilities identified in our committee charter. Unless you have any questions, that completes my report. Uh, Jim, I just want to thank you and the committee. Uh, I think it was probably well over 50 or more questions. 68. 68 uh, that the committee started with. And uh, to get down to a, a good set was uh, was yeoman's work on many people's parts, including especially yours. So um, thank you very much. I'm very comfortable with where the committee is at and the good work that they're going to keep doing. I'm certainly looking forward to watching those interviews. They're always really uh, informative. You get, you learn a lot about a candidate and what their position is. And, and, oh, I've always enjoyed that. Thank you very much. And Frank is making a face. We've got one of our candidates right here. So he's thinking about, oh, no, I'm going to be on TV. I'm sorry, uh, Madam President. Yes, sir. Um, and I don't know this if this is directed to Jim or to um, the lower staff. Um, we have an uncontested election this year, and we need to get 850 votes. Do we have a plan for how we're gonna, what we're going to do to get the 850 votes that we need to have a valid election? Do you want me to handle that? I expected that question would come up, and I went over the charter for the committee that was written by LOWA. And our responsibility is to count the votes. I was very certain of that, <clears throat> assuming that that would come up today. If the, and I have not cleared this with the rest of the committee members, but if the board wishes to change our charter to put a responsibility in there for the committee, I think that we need to know that right away and we need to get on top of that, whatever the answer is. So, this is not the first uncontested election that we've had. I bet you wish yours had been. Okay. But um, the last time that there was an uncontested election, we worked, the board and lowest staff and the elections committee worked together to try and identify places 
uh, to try and, and, and bring the ballots to our members, like at the clubhouse, during uh, the section meet and greets, uh, over by the compactor. We've done things like make sure that everybody knows that there is a, a box over at Holcomb Building. So there's, there's stuff that we can pull from what we, we've done in the past. Um, and as soon as we validate those candidates today, I think that would be the next step is to kind of figure out how we want to do that. Um, yes, please. Madam President, uh, we'll run our reg regular elect electronic voting process through vote now. And uh, what we, I've already talked to James Claiborne, the owner about how to run it. I'm hoping he will give us an economy price uh, because we, uh, we <laughs> basically need to uh, have the notice, put the, open the website to voting and uh, get to, get to the magic 800 number uh, and 850 would be good just in case uh, there were some that weren't uh, in good standing. Um, so, so that's true. And I think the, the question is, would we want to incentivize uh, members to vote, the, the, especially the first 800s? And uh, uh, perhaps we can take that up at a, at a different meeting. There might, might be something we could use to incentivize members to vote. And we've done that in the past, uh, more, more along the lines of, of a discount or a, or a gift certificate or something like that. And you might want to have more than one, maybe have, um, say, five, 10 of those out there that that you'd be eligible if once you voted you'd be eligible for a drawing um and that's that's something that's been used by other property owners associations over the over the time but i think the main purpose here is we're trying to get a quorum for the meeting so that we can hold a meeting and then have the election thank you phil yes professor i was going to just suggest something um i think we really need to focus on vote now electronic voting, because it is literally so simple. It's a two-step process. Um, if we were to advertise that fact that just vote now, could we put a button on our main page on our website just for that period of time when the voting is in effect? Just a button, you know, is a link. The, yeah. the answer is we can work something out. Uh, right, uh, when, simple, when you, something that stands out. People know exactly where to go as soon as they get on a well, website. We even do something better. We email you and give you the link and it knows who you are. The, the link will know who you are and your credentials will already be set up and you can go right on and vote. I understand that and I get those emails. Many times emails get trapped in spam. In spam. So uh, people like to take the uh, freedom to go on the website themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can, we can get, if you contact us, we will get you to the website and to, to be able to vote. So yes, we'll work something out. We also put, I, I believe, actual paper ballots in the currents last time. Well, you're not on microphone. So I'm gonna repeat what Carolyn said. Um, we, we have done that in the past, whether we'll do that this time, we didn't do it the, the very last time because we were able to get to a quorum number. But it's a, it's a, it's a more recent issue um, that their voter turnout has been lower during, during these, um, the last couple of elections. So we're hoping we'll, we'll get back to the higher election numbers that we've had in the past. Well, and I think, especially when it's uncontested, it's explaining to the membership that even though it is uncontested, we still need their votes. Yes. Because otherwise, Carl, you and I are sticking around. No. <laughs> so so we'll, we'll vote 10 times each, right? Okay. Thank you very much. Jim, thank, thank you, you so much. And thank everyone on your committee. All right. Next, we have uh, Helen. Brewer, who is the chair of the Honor Awards Committee. Good afternoon, Madam President, members of the board, general manager. Thank you all very, very much. I'd like to thank you for letting us be here. And you know, lots of times you hear that uh, the board doesn't listen. Well, here you are and you are listening. So thank you very much. I'd also like to offer thanks to Carolyn very, very much, and Lori Trocchio and their staff. They are invaluable. We would not be able to do our job without your help. So thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Um, we have been in full gear. We have made several announcements that have been published in late currents for the honor of awards. We have three nominations so far that we're very happy about. Uh, the biggest thing right now, everything is in place except we need the nominations. So that's your homework to help with, to talk to your friends and neighbors and say, you know, have you thought about so-and-so? Uh, maybe you could suggest that they would be a member. There's qualifications that are listed, but it's very simple to sign up. It's an easy process. Uh, it sometimes it seems intimidating for some of our members. I've had lots of phone calls with people being worried. Well, do I have to say it a certain way or is this the right way to do it? There is no right or wrong way. Just answer the little questions the very best that you can. Submit the paperwork. We're there to encourage participation. We're not there to negate anybody. We would like to honor as many people in the community as possible. So with your help, we would like to be able to do that. Um, the trophies, the little nameplates for those big honor board boards are all ready and set. And uh, so we're full steam ahead, except we need nominations. So members and board, please get out there and get us some names of some wonderful people, because there are many. Any questions? Does anyone have questions for Helen? Well, as liaison, I can tell you, they may be a small committee, but they're very enthusiastic. <laughs> oh, and I wanted to thank Mr. Rappaport. He met with me earlier this year and gave me a lot of good insights and tips for which I am most grateful. And our board liaison, Terry Vickery, has been very helpful with her guidance, keeping us on the straight and narrow, making sure we're doing it right. So, thank And Helen spoils me. She brings cookies. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Um, all right, are there any other committee reports? Uh, the next item, which was FiberLink, we have postponed until the June 28th board meeting. Um, so now we move to item 5.2, BASA. I move, I move the board adopt resolution 2023-9, an administrative resolution regarding the new asset and improvement project policy and process, effective immediately. Second. Second. Moved and seconded for the board to uh, adopt resolution 2023-9, an administrative resolution regarding the new asset and improvement pol project policy and process, effective immediately. Um, would you like to tell us about it, Vasa? Uh, we've talked about this in length at our last um, meeting, or actually, yes, I thought it was in the last board meeting. Yes, we discussed the policy and process. And um, um, I actually had... I don't know how much I want to talk about this. It, it's a it's a process in which our documents are ready for action. Uh, changes are submitted for fast track approval by the board or disapproval, mm -hmm. and um, it's a really um, a, a nice process that will really help everyone involved. I think I said this last time, um, having been on the planning committee. Uh, that this is, I think, a marvelous document because it makes clear to all those on the committee, all of us here on the board, as well as any member or employee who wants to submit a project recommendation, what the process is, not only for that initial one, but once you've submitted it, if it, if it didn't get onto table one, but got onto table two, what do you have to do the next year or the year after? So I think it's a very clear document and I hope that that will help everyone to better understand what they need to do. Um, are there any other comments or questions? In that case, all those who are in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Please <clears throat> unanimously. Um, Walt. I move the board adopt resolution 2023-10. 
a general resolution authorizing the use of repair and replacement reserve fund balance for playgrounds reconstruction effective immediately. Um, move for the board to adopt resolution 2023-10, a general resolution authorizing use of repair and replacement reserve fund balance for playgrounds reconstructive reconstruction effective immediately. Phil, maybe you can walk us through this one. Phil, did you say Phil? Yes, I did say okay. Phil. Okay, thank you, Madam President. Uh, we prepared the resolution that was discussed at the May 17 meeting. Uh, the key words here are repair and reconstruction, that this is more of, it's not just replacing sand with uh, engineered mulch, it's a reconstruction project. So in that in that sense, it would be eligible uh, to, and, and the uh, use of r, &R would be appropriate. Uh, we have styled the resolution as such that there would need to be a, a repayment of the fund. And I just wanna make sure that's where, where you stand at this point. Um, the budget uh, that we are working from uh, is on the previous page of the resolution. Um, it would still be a hundred thousand. Um, you would see that uh, if you look at, if you look at the detail, there's an R and R replacement for the playground parking. Excuse me, playground uh, lot that was already budgeted in the repair and replacement reserve. So those monies are are separate from this consideration, as are operating funds that the grounds um, division would use to for um, regular repairs and and to supply materials. So this is above and beyond what we already have identified in the budget. And the amount would be the 74,618. That's where we would have to use the reserve fund balance uh, to resolve this issue. And uh, we would uh, it would obligate the staff to come up with a plan to uh, pay it back over the next two years, which is outlined in our reserve policy. That we could take two years to pay back. Thank you, Phil. Any comments or questions? Yes, Lee. Uh, you know, in your write-up, Phil, you talked about the uh, inspections and credentials and kind of, you know, how we ended up with some staff turnover and then, you know, a, a um, an inspection form that might not have been of the most current vintage. How are we going to ensure that that getting resolved, who's going to get certified, when are they or have they already been certified, and we, we just don't want to go through this right. again. I understand, and we don't have someone on the staff that's certified today. We do have someone that, that plans to take the test again in the next few uh, few weeks. I think right now the, it's all hands on deck to try to resolve the problem, and, and that is, in a sense has been our, we have our annual inspection. I do think that it would solve, it would be a good uh, way of doing business to say every three years have an, an outside entity do it sort of sort of like we do with our reserve study. We have a reserve specialist come in in the three year mark and come come in and and, and look at at our our uh, equipment. So I could see two years of our staff doing it, assuming they've got the qualification and um, and using a third party uh, just to make sure we have a different set of eyes on it. Uh, we do the same thing with uh, our security uh, assessment. Uh, we have an outside person do it because because we uh, no no offense to our awesome uh, security force, but they may be used to seeing something and 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 not not see it the same way that a third party might. And we would have to incorporate that into our budgets. We'd have to build that into the budget. Yes, that would okay. be part of the request. Any other comments? Yes, Boston. I uh, feel a question about the um, every three years doing a reassessment or uh, of the playgrounds. Do you have a specific date? Because it seemed to me that the, this time of year is just not the best at all because the kids are out, the vacations are here. Yeah, let me say a few more words. I could probably explain it a little bit better. This is a task that would be done in the, let's just say February to April timeframe. It's all part of getting ready for the season. So normally we would have we would have spot checks of the of the playgrounds throughout the year, but there, there would be a, a concerted effort in that time frame to do the the inspection. And uh, so it's usually in that time frame that we decide we need to have 
uh, a new seat on a swing or we need to uh, add enhance the enhance the uh, mulch in a certain area. So it's usually been more of a maintenance item. We do the same thing at the pool. So the pool company comes in and says uh, the chair needs to be replaced or um, whatever whatever it might be. We, we need to take care of, we replace it then. So that's normally the time, but you're right. It got into the summer period when, when all the kids are playing. So, so ideally every year that inspection takes place in the spring before we, we get into summer. Every, every year, it's an annual inspection. Thank you, Phil. Rick, you've got a question. Yeah, thank you, Phil. Um, can you just give us a sense of the, what this cost for the outside inspection? I mean, just not to the dollar, but just kind of a scale of magnitude. I believe it was about $5,000 to do it. All right, thank you. And that, you know, there were several, there were seven different playgrounds. Yeah, a lot to look at. Any other questions? In that case, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any nays? Passed unanimously. Lee. I move the board approve the slate of candidates for the 2023 Board of Directors election. Second. Moved and seconded for the board to approve the slate of candidates for the 2023 Board of Directors election. Um, any discussion? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I think it's important that people understand exactly how this process works. If you go on social media, you would think that there's a cabal that picks and choose candidates and rejects anybody they don't like. That's not how it works here. Literally, anybody who's a member in good standing can uh, run for the board just by filing an application before the deadline. And if they blow the deadline, they can still get on by having a petition. So there's, there is no effort to, to discourage people or to reject candidates or anything else. If you're a member in good standing and you want to run for the board, there is literally nothing preventing you from doing so. But there is one exception that Leaf picked up last year. If you're a convicted felon, you can't run for the board, which is, which is actually we're tougher than the United States Congress. You can, be a, <laughs> you can be a convicted felon and be in Congress, but you can't be here. That's nice to know. Leaf, <laughs> you wanted to say something. And, and I'll just piggyback on that, that there are a number of folks out there on social media who have different beliefs about how this is done. Um, the fine thing I find unusual is none of them ever seem to bother to make application to run for the board, even though they have definite opinions about how it ought to be run. So I'd be glad to see any of those folks out on social media who'd like to come in here and do this job, make application, Give it a shot. Any other comments? Yes, Rick. Yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to our nominations committee because they do a heck of a job every year going out and, and literally beating the bushes trying to find good qualified people to run for the board. Um, and, you know, every year uh, there's always a question, not are there going to be a bunch of people we want to turn away, but uh, are there going to be anyone who's going to run at all. And uh, nominating committee is charged with that responsibility. They do a great job. Once again, this year, we're fortunate to have two people who were um, willing to put their hand up and say, I'll, I'll stand for election and represent the, this community, which involves an awful lot of work. And um, so, you know, we should be grateful for those people who do step up and for the people who are out there trying to recruit people who um, have this community's best interest at heart and are willing to serve. So thank you to them. Thank you, Rick. Any other comments? In that case, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? And pass unanimously. Um, Bill. I move the board approve sending to the Rules Committee proposed amendments to regulation XVID4B3 regarding setting requirements along Route 3 to match the new Orange County Code. Second. Moved and seconded for the board to consider sending to the Rules Committee proposed amendments to regulation 16.4.B.3 regarding setback requirements along Route 3 
to match a new Orange County code. Bill, maybe you can explain this one. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so the good news is uh, a problem is getting a resolve that is keeping a house from being constructed on on uh, Chesterfield Court. Uh, you, you, you might recall that uh, Lake of the Woods sold a lot to um, Foundation Homes uh, back in February of 2022 with the thought that we'd be creating a new private lot, we'd have a new assessment being paid, a new house, another another household to use our amenities. Well, at when Foundation Homes pursued uh, building the house, they went to the county and the county said, there's a hundred foot setback, you can't build a house on the lot. Well. Yeah, that, that's that's unsatisfactory. So fortunately, uh, the county uh, agreed that this would be a good item to resolve, and the county has has taken action and already approved in, in the zoning ordinance through the planning commission and the, and the board of supervisors um, a 50 foot setback. And now the ECC in turn has taken action. We're ready to um, we're recommending today that that we amend uh, regulation 16 to also have the 50 foot setback. And if you'll notice the language in, in uh, subparagraph three or B3 says for new structures, the setback would be 50 uh, feet. So we've given you the schedule and we'd like to, if you agree and you see this is, has merit and, and, and move it on its way to the next step, uh, we'd like to get this uh, in place by August so that uh, foundation homes can, can move ahead with their application and get this get this work done, get the house built, get the family moved in, et cetera. Any questions? Okay, in that case, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays, pass unanimously. Thank you. Rick. I move the board approve a boundary line adjustment for section 11, lot 89 and lot 90 and authorize the president to sign the agreement and plat in a form approved by the lower attorney. Second. Moved and seconded for the board to approve a boundary line adjustment for section 11, lot 89 and 90, and authorize the president to sign the agreement and plat in a form approved by the lower attorney. Um, once again, Phil, I think maybe you can take this one. Uh, yes, ma'am. This is a boundary line adjustment that helps resolve drainage and driveway issues and was able to be worked out between the two lot owners and actually uh, began at a request of our environmental resources manager uh, back last year when, when a new house was being built on, on one of the lots. And so this, this helps us resolve the issues all the way around and, and, and the staff supports it. The low attorney has has reviewed it and approved the language. And now it's it's for you to authorize the president to um, sign the um, the plat and the deed and move forward. So we're, we're ready for your action. Very good. Any questions or comments? All right, in that case, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any aye. nays? Pass unanimously. Um, the next item is the amending the schedule of charges. And Phil, maybe you want to talk to us about that. This is a discussion item. Yes, this is a discussion item only. We'd like to bring this to you for action at the next meeting. Let me get to the page. Um, so back in 2012, the association and other associations were required to pass a resolution with a set of, of the charges. Now, these are separate from our fee schedule, although some of them are on the fee schedule. This is for our books and use of our books and records. And uh, e each of the each of the associations, uh, common interest uh, communities that are subject to the Property Owners Association Act had to pass a resolution. And we we did so at the time and we've updated along the way as we've 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 changed some of the prices. Um, we took a, a real fundamental look at it this year instead of incrementally moving up a price here and there. We looked at, at a real real fundamental look at it because the, the world has changed quite a bit in in 12, in, in these in these uh, 10, 11 years. For example, uh, asking for a paper copy of the um, regulations is is rare. Uh, and for the most part, you can well, you can get anything you want by going to loa.org and it's only if you, 
like paper, or you, you want to use paper for a certain reason, would you ever have to uh, come to us for a copy? And um, because we have the standard that we'll give you the first five pages for free, we, we thought, well, there are probably some documents we don't, we hardly need to charge for. And so if you'll notice, we've, we've lowered the cost, the articles of incorporation, we'll just give you a copy of that if you'd really like to see how we're incorporated by the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, the declarations is a key document, but it's uh, front and back copied. It would be, it'd be very inexpensive as with the bylaws and uh, the regulations is probably more useful to you. It has more detail, but you need to read all these documents together. And so we offer a packet of governing, governing documents um, for, and, and as you can see, we've lowered the prices for that. Our color map is, is a popular item and we, we do uh, sell those. And, um, and, and we also have a large uh, wall map and we, we uh, didn't change the prices on those, uh, on either the color or black and white one if you follow me through the pages. Now, there are some uh, prices that are not set by us and set by the Commonwealth of Virginia through the Department of, uh, of um, Professional and Organizational Regulation. So we, we can charge up to that amount, but we can't charge beyond those. And so you'll see the, the, the prices with the two asterisks next to it. So those are set in um, by, by the state and we do charge those up to those maximums. And those are the, are the ones that are in our fee schedule. You'll see those four right in a row, disclosure packet paper, disclosure packet electronic, transfer fee, and expedited disclosure packet. And uh, additional uh, disclosure packet fee would be, and paper version would be 25. Um, we don't get many, we don't get any requests anymore for DVDs. So we're essentially taking that off. If we had somebody request something, we try to help them out, but it might be easier just to email a, a link to them or, or something. But if, if someone had to get a copy of a video for some reason, something we had, we'd, we'd want to charge for that. So we, we want to charge um, $5 for that, for the actual thumb drive itself. Um, and and that's, that's aside from any effort. If it was something we could readily identify and copy, then it would just be the, the, the cost of the, of the thumb drive. Now let's get down to an item that came up, came to you recently, and that's the member list. And uh, this is where we're charging for, um, if I could have you flip back, it's real important, flip back to the, we're, we're going over the resolution. If we go back to the first, whereas, uh, this is stake, taken right from the, the, the Property Owners Association Act, that we can, we can uh, have a charge reflecting the reasonable cost of materials and labor. That's in the one, two, three, four, five, the fifth line, and also in the sixth line, the actual cost, what it actually costs us to do. So we, we've adjusted, going back to the membership list, uh, we've adjusted these to reflect what it actually uh, costs us to do this. We're able to do things more efficiently, uh, but if we did get a, a request for the members list, we can't just give them what's available today. We need to make sure we've sorted it out. We've taken off members that have left and, and put on the members that have, have come in to make sure it's as accurate as possible. And, um, and so we've, we've changed the, the numbers and you've actually already approved the $50 coming down from 100. And you'll notice too that um, the, um, the uh, membership list on the labels uh, did come down uh, twenty five dollars. That that is a lot of labor still related to that, and there's the there's the labels themselves that has have to be fed into the machine, um, the the copy machine. So we don't get many requests for these these days, but we did want to list it here. Um, importantly, the other sections that says we'll we'll uh, charge everybody equally for these things, and that at the time a member asks for something, uh, we will give them a schedule of charges. Um, I, I do believe I, we, I skipped over a couple of things I wanted to go back over with you. And that is the, the where is it? Well, the single page copying, that's 10 cents per page. We give you the first five free. And then importantly, the last line per hour labor for researching, copying and assembling. Um, that 25 is what's in our current fee schedule. And we believe that's a fair price for, for the labor involved. 
Um, and uh, if, if, for example, it wasn't something we could just reach over to a file, pull out, and have it right there, but it was something we had to go to the archive. So we had to check, we might have to check two or three different sources. Um, some people that may not understand that, but if they put in a request and it's not as specific as, as it could be, we may have to go check with three offices to find out if we have that document. So it, that's there uh, to cover us. And those, those have to be paid up front. So if a person, and we have to, we have to tell them ahead of time what we think the charge would be and uh, the, the, the person would have to pay it up front before we got, we went on, got underway. Um, the last thing I wanted to tell you is, is the distribution of schedule is required. So if we got, if we got somebody that did make a request and said, I'd like this work done and we say, um, well, we would have to charge you for the research. We also need to provide a copy of this resolution to them so they can see that where the board has taken action in the past. And I believe that's everything I wanted you to know about it. Uh, so we, we'd essentially be updating uh, the document from the last time we took action, which was in uh, July of 2018. And so if, uh, if this looks like where you want us to go, we'll, we'll set this up and have it ready for you to approve at the next meeting. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. You know, there's a part of this that just kind of bothers me. Um, the fact that people's personally identifiable information can be obtained by anyone in the community by virtue of paying a small fee. And we do know that we have people in our community who either have committed or are alleged to have committed crimes, some of a violent nature. Um, I'm just, you know, while I understand that the VPOAA has a requirement in there, I wonder what our liability is if by virtue of providing this to someone, they then used it to stalk somebody or whatever. You know, do we have any risk because we followed, you know, these instructions at this day and age, this kind of open information, um, you know, I can go to pretty much anybody on the internet who has my information and tell them that you cannot, you're not authorized to give it to anybody. I mean, California and other states have led the country in their privacy laws around um, information, electronic information, dissemination of that information. And I just have a concern about, you know, First of all, that someone could use this information improperly. And then what's the risk to our association? And I know that's, that's not germane to are we okay with setting the price, but it is a concern I have. No. Um, Lee, I, this may, thank you, Madam President. This might help. Uh, the member list consists of names, lots of sections and addresses. It does not have phone numbers or any any other information. That's still a, a bit of information, but it doesn't go as far as having email, phone number, et cetera. It's just the member list is simply that. It's names, lots and sections, and addresses. Right. So I, I still can find exactly where somebody yes. lives. Right. And if I wish to do something mm -hmm. nefarious, I have that information. And it's right there in the Property Owners Act that it says we have to, if it's a proper request, as long as they're not using it to, to for pecuniary gain, we we are obligated to do that. However, we can recover we can recover our uh, labor and materials to do it. Thank you, Phil. Does anyone else? Have, yes, Vasa. Phil. So the blue text is the the new changes, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so where everything else is going up in price, why are we lowering the price to from five to two dollars from seven? I don't know. I front, can't have it front and back from, copying. from sixteen dollars to ten dollars and fifty cents. Why are we doing that? To uh, to reflect the actual cost. It's, I know it's but, much lower if we if we double sided document. It's uh it's. But what I'm saying is, I think. What instead of lowering the prices, we should not be. I mean, everything else is going up. Why are we lowering 
our prices. Yeah. These are these are standard documents, so it's easy to get them, copy them, and provide them. Where we where they are recommending increasing the price is when it cost comes to the cost of labor. So in the all other documents per hour labor for research and copying and assemblage, that's recommended to go I understand up. that all those documents still have to be copied before they're sold. So they may be standard, but it costs time and money. And I just, in my opinion, it's just not enough. Right. Well, the, the way you could change that is you could say there are no more free pages uh, because we give the first five free. We could start charging for the first page or you could you could raise, but but we believe 10 cents is still a reasonable price to recover our costs for paper and copying with the machines that we have. So I, I guess if, if you wanted the prices to go up, you would say no more free pieces of paper. You gotta you gotta pay. And I don't I don't know if you really I'm just do looking that. at it used to be sixteen dollars, that's dropped to ten fifty. So it's because we're gonna that. front and back copy and be as efficient as we can with it okay. instead of single page copies for that many pages we're going to front and back copy it those and and as i said we get we we don't balance really balance the budget on this it's it's just a, a it's almost a nuisance charge uh, but we have to charge everybody the same and um and we would say you know did you know you can get an electronic copy of this it's right on the website do you really need a paper copy and if they do we'll make a copy it, it's just reflecting really the cost we we still think ten cents a copy is a fair price. Color large wall map fifteen dollars. This maps I own several of them, and they are, in my opinion, underpriced. But again, that's well, we can check opinion. that. I can double check those numbers and see if those are still fair prices for those. Yes. Except it's not a fair price. It talks about they can't exceed the actual cost of such materials and labor. And so, if we can produce something for less than the market value, we can't charge the market value. We have to. We basically have to sell it at cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's you know. It's you know. This is your state legislature in action, and uh, you know the, uh, the same thing with regard to having to disclose information that, to people who, you know, uh, who who will tell you up and down that they're going to use it for a proper purpose. But if they say that, you got to give it to them because the, the state legislature and its wisdom has said we have to do that. It if this helps, Vasa, if this helps explain it back on the, my cover sheet under fiscal impact, I um, described that in the 101 administrative budget, we already count on and collect $45,267 for disclosure packets. Those are, those are prices that are going up. Those, are, those reflect the effort it takes to put together one of those packets. And we also budget and count on 15586 for real estate transfer fees. Everything else is more of like a miscellaneous fee. It's uh, it's not one that that you really count on to 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 take care of your budget. These these though they're, they're important pieces, and they're and we're recouping our labor and effort for inspections and putting the packets together and the coordination. Hope that Carl, helps. you wanted to say something? Yeah, just out of curiosity, why would somebody want a list of all the people in here and their addresses when you? Don't they sell a phone book up at uh, Ace Hardware or the fire department or somebody for 10 bucks? So they do, but your name is only in there if you provided that information. Right. Yeah, a lot of that information is also not exactly up to date. The, the fire and rescue does a Herculean job of trying to keep it up to date, but you have a lot of, you know, even during a year, you have a, a lot of turnover. And so if you have a directory that's maybe perfect on January 1 by, you know, August 1, if there's several hundred people who are wrong. I think that's a good explanation. We've got the, we've got the current list. That one could be a little out of date, or there could be some that don't, don't choose to participate. Are there any other comments or questions? All right, so this was a discussion item and we'll have it on the agenda we for the next board. Ready to go at the next meeting? Yeah. Okay, good. Do you think we could put this on consent or do you think we need to talk about it again? I guess it does have to do with money though, doesn't it? So we'll, we've said if anything has to do with money, we'll keep it on the regular agenda. Okay. Sounds smart. All right, um, so the next item is director comments. Do any directors have? The yeah, other was already done. Consent agenda. 
director comments. Yes. Um, I always ask our membership to use tech control, please, all the time when they admit their friends and family members into the community. It is saves all of us money and time and just helps all of us to move forward. Thank you. Do any other directors have any comments? Yes, Lee. Uh, I would just like to pass along uh, congratulations to the facilities team and the food and beverage team on the uh, soft opening of the <coughs> fairways patio facility. Uh, I was over that evening. Uh, Phil was there. Walt was there. Uh, that patio looks fabulous. And I think it's definitely going to be uh, a, a big attraction for uh, not only our members, but for folks who come in from the outside. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm so very happy with the way it turned out and the support that we had from the Fairways Committee, from the Golf Committee, and from other members of the board uh, to actually make this uh, a reality. So I think it just turned out spectacular. Thank you, Lee. I'm sure, Phil, you'll pass that on to. Yes, ma'am. I will pass that on to the staff. Appreciate the feedback. It does okay. look very nice. It does. Any other director comments? Sure. With yes. Alana, Alana, I would just urge the members to use it so we can pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In that case, I will move on to scheduled meetings. Uh, the next regular board meeting is on Wednesday, June 28th at the community center. 1 p.m. is the executive session, 2 p.m. open session. And then we have another regular board meeting on Wednesday, July 12th. Uh, at the community center, 1 p.m. executive session, 2 p.m. open session. Carl. I move to, I move to adjourn the meeting at 325. Amazing. Moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Moved. Yeah. And I think I get the prize now. You, you get both.